Welcome to a concert that features the viola in the most unusual setting. On January 7th, the Philadelphia Chamber Music Society explores the sonic possibilities of two violas. What you just heard was the brilliant masterpiece by the British composer George Benjamin, Viola Viola, performed by violist Misha Amory and myself, Xinyuan Huang. And in his own words, this is what he says about the piece. My initial thoughts of how to solve the many compositional problems inherent within this most unconventional medium may have suggested the viola's accustomed role as a melancholy voice hidden in the shadows. However, once underway, a completely different instrumental character, fiery and energetic, imposed itself. My desire at times was to conjure an almost orchestral depth and variety of sound. This accounts for the fact that the two viola parts are virtually braided together. Indeed, clearly independent lines only begin to flower towards the work's cantabile center. The implied harmony is intended to be as sonorous as possible, the texture sometimes maintaining four or more parts for sustained periods. On a personal note, Misha and I have braided our lives together for the last 30 years. So it's a huge privilege to be able to present this with my most trusted life partner. Another interesting work I'd like to share is the Undiscovered Viola Sonata by George Walker. Walker was one of the first black musicians to have graduated from the Curtis Institute of Music in 1945, later winning a Pulitzer Prize in music in 1996. His Viola Sonata was written late in his life and dedicated to his father. It's a great pleasure to collaborate with my very dear friend, pianist Thomas Sauer, who has crossed paths with Walker. Let's hear some of the stories. I met George Walker in 2015 when I was working on a project at Manus College where I put on some concerts of Beethoven and music of George Walker. And when I say I met him, I really met him over the phone at that point. Um, he was not in the best of health and he was unable to come to the concerts or any of the rehearsals. Uh, I did come to meet him in person about a year and a half after that. Uh, I was invited to play the third piano sonata at a concert of his music at the Harvard Club and he was in attendance. Uh, it was a great pleasure to meet him. He was uh, quite you know, elderly. He was maybe 93 or, or something at the time. Uh, very beautifully dressed and his, he had a, a sort of patrician manner about him. He was quite a formidable fellow and I think he, he came by that naturally. His father, from what I've read, his father was a, was a physician, a very severe man, uh, sort of self-made self man, uh, worked very hard to come up in, in life and fought a lot of racism, of course, along the way. This is in the, the 20s and 30s and and even before in Washington, D.C., and that's where George Walker was raised. Uh, he, he seemed to have this quality of, of it being imposing and a little bit intimidating, but also very gentle, which, uh, which really struck me uh, that evening at the, at the dinner. <laughs> Thank you. 
the George Walker Viola Sonata is from 1989, sort of the when he was in the you know in the in the peak of his of his compositional career. Uh, the piece is dedicated to his father, whom he had very strong feelings for. His father was a, a very distinguished physician in Washington, and uh, the, just the fact that this piece is dedicated to his father suggests to me, uh, having read his memoir, that that it's an that was an important piece to to George. And there's a quote at the end um, from a medieval motet, uh, which, again, you know, very surprising. It's, it's, I, I, I guess the word surprising just keeps coming to my, uh, coming to my lips. Uh, I, I feel like this piece has a kind of magnetism that, that, that draws the listener along. Mm-hmm. 